now in your name, Jesus, that you would be with our pastor, Robert Green, as he teaches, be with his lovely wife, our First Lady Vicki. And, Lord, we just thank you for Burning Bush Worship Center, the yes. ministerial staff, and all that are there working to continue to build up your kingdom here on earth, Lord. I ask right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would be with those that will participate in the study of your word tonight. Have your way in each of us, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 We bless God for being here tonight. Amen. We're going to go ahead and, and head into our reflection from the fire that, that we experienced on Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So if, if without further ado, uh, Pastor Stanley, lead us through that. And then after that, we're going to be taught tonight from the oracle himself, the walking and living leatherback Bible himself. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that person? <laughs> But, but but um Pastor Tim is gonna take us through our lesson tonight. We'll be blessed. Oh, amen. Amen. amen by what he gives us. Amen. amen. So without, amen. without further ado, Pastor amen. Stanley, take us through reflections. But before uh, Pastor Tim takes us through the word, amen. Amen. Hey, amen. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's a great Wednesday. It's been a great Wednesday outside. That weather is a Phenomenal, man. The season has <laughs> definitely changed. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. We're reflecting on uh, Sunday's message that was uh, preached and teached by uh, uh, Pastor uh, Carrie Mo. Amen. It, Amen. Su it surprises me when I talk to Pastor Mo and she tells me, you know, certain things. But then she gets in the pulpit and just sets the whole church on fire when she does it. <laughs> you know? I'm like, you been, you were playing with me. You ain't got ain't nothing going on. But, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I understand why the enemy fights her so strong. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you deliver a message like she does, or when she worship leads like she does, it gives me clarity on why the enemy fights her the way she, why, the way he does. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Uh, the message that was taught and preached on Sunday morning was the topic was the furnace of affliction subtopic, a walkthrough. And it came from Isaiah 48, 10. And I have it in the NLT version. It's one verse, one simple verse. It reads, I have refined you, but not as silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. Amen. 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 I'm pretty sure everybody can. Everybody should have something to say about this because I'm pretty sure everybody is has or is going through a season of of suffering. Um, and when you know when you look through it through the lens that, that was taught on Sunday, you, you realize that even in suffering, you're still in His hand. Like the furnace can be turned Amen. up, but it's Amen. not going to be turned up Amen. to the point where it's going to kill you. It's going to it's going to get some Lord. things out of you. It's going to prepare you for um what's, what he has next for you. Amen. And uh, I, she was looking wait at minute, me while she was preaching. I said, "Are you? were you preaching at me? She was like, no, it's just good to see familiar faces in the crowd. I said, because I was taking that word for word. I mean, <laughs> definitely, I was taking that word for word. But, uh, but uh, I won't do all the talking. I'll open the floor to anybody who wants to uh, give their input, uh, any nuggets, any pieces of it that you took home with you and was able to make it this far in the week with it. Amen. Hey, uh, uh, Pastor Stanley, would you read also uh, 43, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2? I think she used both of those. 43, 1 and 2? Yeah. Yes, sir. Give me one second. Why are why, why you, you, you finding it? I, I guess I got a question that we can, we, we can uh, <laughs> expound on. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, it, if it's not going to kill us, why do we think that it will? <laughs> feel like it. Feel like it. Uh, uh, fear is the first thing that so comes up. On yeah. So <laughs> enough feel it, like it. it. It sounds convincing now, but mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? I think I would say looking back, um, you know, looking back over your shoulder once you made it through that season, you can kind of understand it when you when when you get to that point. But when you're going through it, my God. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 
So I have uh, <laughs> Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, and that reads in the NLT. But now, oh, Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. That's it right there, Pastor, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have, for I have ransomed you. Mm. I have called you Ooh. by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you. Amen. 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 So if you received anything from that message on Sunday, feel free to share it tonight. Amen. Amen. I received a lot. I mean, it was just so plain. <laughs> the way she put it, especially when she said, God said, you don't hear me unless you're in the furnace. Mm. And, and she's, <laughs> Lord, Man. look, and that's why we, we call on them. We be mm. burning, burning up. You know what I mean? That, that's when we <laughs> really get our attention. Lord, you mm. there? <laughs> Are you sure? Servant, listen. You do you not Amen. burning me up? Yeah. <laughs> look, you look for them when you start <laughs> when you're in the fire, but otherwise, you know, we don't. Yes. And I like verse 11 when it says, I will rescue you for my sake. Mm. Yes, yeah. for my own. Come on, for my own sake. Mm -hmm. I will not mm -hmm. let my reputation. Mm -hmm. Reputation. See, we, we can rest on that. And yes. I will not share my glory with idols. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It ain't about us. Yeah. Look, it's a lot to that furnace thing. Yeah, it is. Like you just said, to burn some stuff up out of us. Ooh, yes. Hey man, I'm gonna let somebody else talk about that. Yeah. So <laughs> so so what you so what you're saying is that fire is capable of burning up fear. Mm-hmm. It's burning a lot of stuff. Amen. <laughs> yes, it is. I like to look at it as um, when if you look at it through the lens that he's speaking through in the scripture, even though it might get crazy and the heat might get turned out, it's an it's a controlled environment. Like so, can't can't nothing get in that's gonna kill you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So if it's con if yeah. it's a controlled environment, then that's like. Something that's simulated to to it's gonna look like it's gonna kill you. It's gonna feel real. It's gonna feel like it's gonna hurt you. But when it's all said and done, you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna come out uh, as pure gold on the other side. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I like it when she. I like up. when you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joanne. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like it when she brought up the fourth man. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. When the Hebrew boys was in the fire, mm -hmm. there was a fourth man. Hallelujah. Y'all know who that is. And, uh, yeah. See, we forget he's there. Mm -hmm. you the know. protector. Yes, yes, yes. Especially when you mm. walk in obedience. Oh, yes. And going through the mm. fire. Oh, my God. Mm. The only thing is, and I don't know if anybody can echo this, like, when you're going through the fire, when you're going through seasons like that or tough periods like that, you start to question if you're being obedient. I don't know about anybody else because it's like, wait a minute, this fire getting hot. Like I might have done something <laughs> wrong. <laughs> did I? Did you hear me, Lord? Did you see me showing up? Do you? Do you see these things? It starts to make you question everything that's on the inside of you. Like, is my heart right? Am I doing this right? And Lord, am I? Do did you hear me, Lord? Like. All of these questions start to come out from your flesh when that fire gets turned up. That's what Pastor Mo said. She said it makes you repent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak to anybody else, Pastor Stanley, but when the fire starts touching me, the first thing I ask is, God, what is it you want me to learn? I'm Ooh, sorry. I'm, I'm telling this. you. <laughs> what is yeah. it? I'll go back to class. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that surrendering is a uh, is a learned behavior, Pastor Tim. <laughs> yes, indeed. Amen. I never like getting spankings or whippings, so I, I just one whipping for each lesson. No. That's uh, no. I'm telling you. No, man. <laughs> y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I start singing them songs. No weapon. <laughs> 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 <Man>. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and what I loved about it too was these three words that's in a couple of verses where there's adversity. It says, "You pass through." Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, a lot of times it doesn't feel like the storm is passing over. No, sir. <laughs> Mm. It, it seems like we're passing in the storm. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's where we get fearful. Mm. We, we feel like we're passing the storm. That's why we have to keep going back to this word. Yeah. It's preached or taught mm -hmm. to remind us that, that we're not passing in the storm. The storm mm. is actually passing over. Amen. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was, uh, I was on... Uh, Miss uh, Minister Darveen had sent the message to the the uh, ministers and elders during the week. I think it was it might have been Sunday. I'm thinking it was Sunday. She sent the message through uh, all everybody through the group text, and um, I asked her because uh, she put it on Facebook as well. What was going on with her? And I asked her. I said, "Did you see? Did you hear the message that uh, that Pastor Mo preached? Because it was right along the line of it, right in line with it." You know, it was right along with it. I just wanted to check and make sure that she that she heard it because it was speaking right to what she was talking about. It was speaking right to it. Amen. And Amen. what I say, yes, yes, I exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <you did. laughs> yeah. Because I was surely passing through the fire. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, and while I'm up here, I do want to say that, you know, even though you're going through the fire, God still reminds you, mm -hmm. just like in the scripture, that he loves us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, yeah. He loves us. I, 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 yeah, you do, you're going through this, but I love you. Mm -hmm. Keep Amen. going. I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah I'll that's put what you I was up. about that's to right. say. Okay. Oh, go on, go on, Joanne. I said, what, <laughs> what I was about to say, like Stanley was reading verse yeah, one but... and verse two, it, it it brings the songs to my mind that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Walk said. with me, Lord. He's always with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. 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 I like to say this, and this might, I don't know, um, but sometimes your fire too is your flesh. I know y'all was saying, you know, sometimes you thinking like, Lord God, what am I doing wrong? What did I do something wrong? Am I not walking right? And right now I'm in the fire, but I'm in the fire behind my flesh. Mm. But Jesus went through a flesh fight mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because they wore his flesh out. Amen. 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 So I've been beating myself up behind my flesh, mm -hmm. but I read tonight in uh what is it? John. Where are my notes? It was um first Peter, first Peter 4, 1 through 19 how Jesus was beat in the flesh, mm. you know, and, and, and that's the fire. It, it's that's fire. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you trying to, you want to walk right. And like, like, um, what do he say? Uh, was it John or who wanted to do right? Paul. But his flesh, Paul was Paul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Paul. Paul. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because you think that the uh, the 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 soldiers whip Jesus? Mm. We whip ourselves. Amen. Mm. More Amen. often and more frequently than mm -hmm. Jesus was whipped. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> and and, yes. and we bleed. We bleed differently. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And, and we even whip ourselves with our own words, and we'll say, "I am so sick." Mm. Oh Lord, wow. he I, 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 I am so broke. I, I, I am I am losing my mind. I, I am just I, I just I don't know what's wrong with me. Mm. And, and and we we begin to surrender the power of God that's for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? By 
by leaning on our flesh, which is totally against us. That's right. Right. Mm. I, I told but my girlfriend, me. I said, it's, it's, it's the conviction for me. That'd be beating me down. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that's what I'm yeah. saying. We, we, yeah. we, we wear emotional scars. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just like Jesus wore the 39 stripes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and we wear those emotional mm -hmm. scars to the point where sometimes we can't even hold our head up. Sometimes we, we, we can't even look at ourselves in the mirror. Come on. You know Come I mean? on. We, we, we can't look at our situation mm -hmm. because we blame ourselves mm -hmm. for what we should be blameless for. Amen. 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 We, we, we shouldn't blame ourselves for the flesh. We didn't put the flesh in us. God did. Yeah. But what we should blame ourselves for is not taking the antidote. It's, it's like knowing that there's COVID out there and, and we don't get the vaccination. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. You know, so, so, so we know the cure. So we got to get in line to get as much of that Holy Ghost. Go glory to God. Amen. 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 We got to get that, that that cleansing power. Yes. That redeeming power. Amen. You know what I mean? That'll wipe away the conviction because Jesus already paid for it all. Yes, he did. His yes, stripes did. are supposed to be so we don't have to wear our stripes. Hallelujah. Amen. So those 19 works, 17 works of the flesh, we don't have to, those are stripes. Mm. When you think about it. Those are stripes against our body, against our soul, against our spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But but he paid so that we are healed Amen. from that, from those stripes. Amen. And, 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 and we don't bleed out. Amen. 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 And don't forget God said he, he'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Never. Thank glory be to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and uh, you, you, you and I were talking, Laura. And, but you know, I, I want everyone to know that that God has the power to supersede whatever power mm -hmm. is coming against you through your flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he's got the power. I mean, it's but we just have to lean and depend on Him yeah. to do it. Amen. Amen. What I mean, and be satisfied with how he does it. That's the part. Yeah, that's a big part right there. That's a that's a big part. Sometimes, wait a minute, God, what? Yeah, yeah. This way? Yeah, exactly. Like nobody around me. You mean nobody's gonna be around me? Like, yeah. And you, you know what? You never really look at it from that from that angle. Um. His flesh was wore out, like you said, uh, Miss Lord. Yeah. And we think about everything that's tied to our flesh, our desires, uh, our wants, the things that we think of, that we need, um, our mm -hmm. feelings, all of that stuff. You know, it was no coincidence that his flesh was worn out the way it was. Mm -hmm. You know how he was tired. Just, just his his. He was just tired. How can you? Could you imagine being beat all night, mm -mm. spat on, and all of that that comes with it? But then we have to move through the world depending on nothing but the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So yeah, where where the flesh out? Where my flesh out? But yeah, if you have the Holy Spirit, then you're good. It's gonna be tough and it's gonna hurt, but you're gonna. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. yeah. You know, you Paul also said, you know, he was talking about, "Oh, wretched man that I am, mm -hmm. you know, who shall deliver me?" Um, he. He said when he would do good. Mm. <laughs> That's the part I was looking mm -hmm. for. <laughs> Evil is always present. Uh -huh. and we, and, mm. But you know why? Because it's present in us. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. You're talking about flesh. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. Because we don't we don't want to go through this furnace thing. No. Mm -hmm. But Not it's, the inner inner. it's necessary though. So we, I, I we, guess the learning part is learn to be, rejoice. We mm -hmm. keep hollering about enemy and yeah. it's always inner me. Amen. <laughs> That's the part. Amen. That part. Amen. I know. Amen. That was all. <laughs> yeah. 
Th that's why they call it works of the flesh. flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, because it, it's, it's an activity. It's, it, it's, it's moving even when we aren't. Mm -hmm. mm. it's, it's, it's generating thoughts and even when we're not thinking. Mm -hmm. That's why somebody can say something or do something that gives like an immediate reaction because mm -hmm. it's what? Working. Amen. Yeah. So what did the flesh? What did the flesh start doing? The flesh start moving. Uh -huh. the, flesh, the, the flesh, the the flesh make your eyes start moving around in your head. You know what I mean? <laughs> the flesh makes it make it make your mouth start curling up. Uh -huh. you know? The flesh make them four letter words just creep right up on your gums, right, mm -hmm. right on your tongue. <laughs> You know what I mean? Amen. I'm just saying, but with your flesh yeah. not working. Very true. Yes, you ain't right. intend for it to work. Right. But you ain't got to ask it to work because it's obedient. Amen. It's going to work. Uh -huh. yeah. You know what I mean? You, 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 you can hear one thing. Or you can Somebody can say something. You can hear one thing and they said something else because mm -hmm. what was happening? Your flesh was working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we said, I thought, you, did you just, did I hear you? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because the, the the interference of the flesh mm. will make you think somebody's cussing you out, and they mm. may be telling yeah. you to have a good day. <laughs> kind of like, that's almost like Pastor. That's almost like the tongue. How you can't control your tongue, you can't yeah. make your tongue right. stop moving. Mm -hmm. The flesh is really doing that too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, the Paul said there's a battle going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know a war. There, there's a war going on. You know what I mean, and, and and it's and it's not stopping. It's just it's just that we can get in a position where we're guaranteed to win. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 It doesn't stop the battle. We're just guaranteed the victory. Glory be to God. But the problem is, we 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 become unwilling to fight. Mm. We start to feel like I shouldn't have to fight. You know, God can wave his magic wand from heaven and make all this go away. Right. Well, why don't he just do it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, we, we can say, Lord, do it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> for me. We think it hard, too, right? <laughs> Sing it and shout, Lord, do it. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, when you hear that do it, that we're being obstinate and not being humble. <laughs> He know we, you he know, you ever said something to your mom and she said, boy, quit yelling at me. I want to, yes, she was. Uh -huh. We tried to dress it up where it didn't sound like a yell. <laughs> 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 but she knew exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with God. He knows that we're angry. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, he knows that we say do it because we sick and tired of him what? Not doing it. Amen. Amen. Oh, right. Lord. Well, you, and I you mean, think about <laughs> go ahead, say no, nah, go ahead, Elba. I was gonna say, it's, it's you know, you're right, you, you just want him, like I was telling the bishop, I just want him to deliver me. I mean, just get me out of this thing. Um, mm -hmm. I want it now, yeah. <laughs> what you waiting for, God? <laughs> <laughs> what the question say about this? There's a question uh, that comes on in a uh, in a commercial. It's that I want this. It's my money, and I want it now. Yes, that's you, it. You, you don't it's want to wait money. for it. <laughs> yeah, I want it now. And God, then you yeah. still calling out His word. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> expecting Him to move. But I know I don't call their script in the book. Mm -hmm. you but you know. think about it. You think about it. Uh, the the track that we go through when we are in the furnace and we want out is nothing that our heavenly father jesus didn't go through because you could only imagine what the beating the being spat upon the being made fun of that was a furnace because he had to walk through that a certain way like we're commanded to walk through life a certain way and to how to treat people and how to love people. It'd be different if that didn't come from somebody who went through it. Right. It'd be different if Pastor Tim told me that. But we're talking about Jesus the Christ who went through it, crucified, beat, spat on, uh, made fun of, beard pulled out of his face. He went through the furnace. So he went through that furnace ahead of us, whether it be sickness or pain or uh, feeling like you've been abandoned. Because I can only imagine that's the son of God feeling like he's been abandoned by his father. 
Because he's got to go through this furnace that he has to go Pay out my message, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he has to go through the furnace. And to know that our example went through the furnace, <laughs> it, it, it makes it a tad bit easier for us. I ain't going to say it makes it 1,000% easier, but it makes it a tad bit easier for us, Pastor. <laughs> well, you, you know, Pastor Stan, sometimes we stop moving in the furnace. I told a story about one time I was mm. on on 95 in South Carolina, mm -hmm. terrible rainstorm, blinding, wind, everything. I mean, people with their flashes on and all, oh, I mean, you, you could barely see. Mm -hmm. And there were cars that pulled over on the side of the road with their flashes on. Yes, sir. And I was just mm -hmm. praying and, and my spirit said, keep going. Mm -hmm. And I'm just easing on, keep going, just barely moving. Keep going. I could see the car in, close enough in front of me, so I just kept going. I, and literally, it was almost like God had drawn a line in the earth. Mm. There was a mm. place where the rain was that. Mm. Wow. It just stopped. And the pavement on the other side was completely dry. And mm. the sun and the sun was shining. But here's the thing. Mm. When I looked in my rearview mirror at the storm, mm. I could still see people's flashing lights that had pulled over on the side of the road. Mm. And that thing still mm. stays with me today because I know that I had to keep moving in the storm because mm. I was on my way out. But the Man. people that pulled over <laughs> on the side, they had to endure the storm. Mm. Wow. Mm. wow. For as long as it took. My God, don't pull over in the storm. What we have to do is we have to keep moving in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. He said, mm -hmm. "We have our we 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 move and we have our what being. Mm -hmm. We have to right. keep moving. We can't mm -hmm. pull over to the side of the road and turn off emergency flashes on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We got to keep moving in the storm, and 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 that's where we got to get in tune with God and ask Him that Are you saying keep moving, Lord, mm -hmm. or should I pull over? Mm -hmm. we, have to, mm -hmm. we have to find out what is it would you have me to do? Amen." Mm -hmm. I ain't in Pastor mm -hmm. Tim Stone. Mm -hmm. I ain't in Laura Stone. Mm -hmm. I ain't in Michelle Owen Stone. Mm -hmm. I ain't in Cecilia. Mm -hmm. I'm in my stone. Amen. What would you have mm -hmm. me to do? Amen. 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 And then That's that is what I should what be doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Pastor mm -hmm. Ben, I had a similar experience going through a storm coming from Greensboro, North Carolina on 58. It was pouring, wind was blowing, trees were falling down everywhere. If people were pulled over, I was led to keep going. Mm. And won't mm. skate. I, I, I just mm. couldn't get out of there. And, uh, <laughs> the thing that did wow. scare me is when Andre, I used to always keep him up front. I forgot how old he was. Are we going to die? I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's scared. Me. I said, no, boy, be quiet. <laughs> we, we got through, and I thank God. Because <laughs> uh, some storms are designed to refine us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? True. Yes, sir. And it's his process whether we move, go forward, stay still, because we don't want to come out what? Too soon. Too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We, we don't want to come out the storm undone. Mm -hmm. That's right. We don't want to come out the, the storm because it made us uncomfortable mm -hmm. and then have to spend a longer period of time being discomforted mm -hmm. come on. because we came out too soon. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. Amen. It is, so it is 731. Does anybody have else have any input, any more input they want to add to uh, what was given in the message on Sunday morning? So Pastor Green, what you just described was worse than waiting. Coming out yeah. from quick. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yeah. That, that, that's why we have to do it God's way, not our own. I will say this, Pastor Stan, real quick about the, the sermon on Sunday. It was a beautiful testimony because it were personal references. And see, once you have personal references, then a message, and that message is about what it was about, then, then you you reach the point where can't nobody tell you 
Hey, young, the shout out over the top. Yes, yeah, sir. Amen. Oh, yes. And what God is. Yes. I, I don't, and I was talking to Darvin the other day, and she said, I don't know what's causing it, Pastor. I just don't want to know what it is. I said, we're going to pray. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're going to pray. You know what I'm saying? The next time I talked to her, she was glad. I'm home. I'm good. I'm better. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at that point, we don't even, we still may not know what it was, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. know who, we know who it is. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We, Amen. We, we, we know who our help is. That's Amen. right. Amen. We know who our healer Amen. is. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Yeah. I believe some of them, 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 them furnaces oh, will teach you that. You know, them seasons of going through the furnace will definitely teach you that because sometimes you forget and uh, the, our Heavenly Father ain't got no problem with having you go through a furnace season where he reminds you of who he is, what he can do, how he can take your finances and stretch them, uh, how he can keep you. He ain't got no problem with running you through that class one more time. Just in case if you need a refiner, he'll run you right through it. And he'll be the same God going through it the first time as he was that time. Amen. 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 So it is uh, 733. Uh, if there would be no more input, we will place it into the hands of our teacher, the illustrious Pastor Timothy Williams Jr. Amen. 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 All right, Good. illustrious. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. <laughs> I need two people to read John 316 from King James or New King James and then the NIV, please. And he said, New King James. For God so loved the world that he Which gave means, his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, uh, NIV, someone. To so the NIV, hang on. John 3.16, NIV. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son mm -hmm. that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. 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 Our topic tonight is the abandonment of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what I said that Stanley was all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, let me start is what does abandon mean to you? When you hear the word abandon, or what does it speak to you? Or what has been your experience with the word abandon or abandonment? Anybody? Uh to be abandoned, I take it as um you take a child and you abandon a child. It means to walk away from it. Uh walk away from all responsibility attached to it and just leave mm -hmm. them to fend for themselves. Okay. Anybody else? People walking away from you. Okay. To be left People. alone. Yeah. Yeah. To be deserted. Mm -hmm. To be okay. lonely. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Lost. Lord, yeah. And that that was my experience when I first came across this uh, word. Abandoning me. You know, somebody left you or left you alone with me, left alone and be deserted, forsaken. You know, <laughs> like they didn't care about you. Mm -hmm. But uh, but this lesson taught me, and I share with you that that's all on the negative side. Mm -hmm. That's not the positiveness of God. When we talk about somebody who play a sport with reckless abandon. Does that mean they left the sport? Or what does that say to you? Anybody? You said reckless abandonment if they played the sport? If they play a sport with reckless abandon or, or they uh, give themselves over to their work with reckless abandon. Uh, they, sac they sacrifice everything to dedicate themselves to this sport, whatever it might be. Uh, golf or basketball or baseball. Oh, uh, working hard is working reckless abandon on their job. Mm -hmm. well, not too much that they left it, but they gave everything mm -hmm. to that effort. Mm -hmm. And when we look at John 3 16, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Amen. 
<laughs> so that whosoever believe on him shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Salvation for us is not merely deliverance from sin or the experience of personal holiness. Salvation and the abandonment of God is deliverance out of ourself into him holy, permanent. No question, without restraint. That's how God treats us. He protects us without restraint. Mm. We have conditions. I'll do this if you do that. Mm. Wow. And sometimes in our ignorance or lack of understanding who God is, we try to say, let's make a deal with God. I'll do this, God, if you do this for me. Mm. But God that he wants us to. If everybody will mute, uh, mute their lines, I uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I got caught up, so I, I didn't even hear after that. Please forgive me. Um, we have to be ultimately surrendered to God, abandoned to God without restraint, without condition, without any holes. Just like if no holes are, that's how our love for God is. That's how our service to God is, without restraint. To yield, ultimately, to yield holy. I know that word puts us on edge sometimes, because that means we got to give up power to somebody else. That means we don't have any control. But that's that's another form of abandonment. We can give ourselves holy to God without restraint, without caution, without condition. You look at uh, all the things we talked about being in the furnace and what God delivers out of. He don't put conditions on that. We don't want to put the conditions. Hurry up and do it. But God is um, uh, I can't even think of the word. Uh, he, he always is on our side, always on our side. And that that word abandoned in our, our mind, it has to be doing a flip. We have to flip it like if people flip houses. We have to flip that understanding that it's not just being left. Because God says what well, he would never be mm. or forsake Amen. us. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the exact opposite. He's committed to us <laughs> without restraint, without condition. I can't say that enough because as I was giving up the negative side of abandonment, it was hard to catch hold of the positive side because when, you be, when you've been uh, deserted by someone or someone left you, that leaves a permanent hole that you're going to always remember. Mm-hmm. But you have to turn to a God to get you the positive fear that hope with something that can take place of it. Amen. Uh, we look at God's personality. He can never change. So that means he never lies. And he mm -hmm. said he won't forsake us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. I, have, I have a question. Uh, and the question help us remember what God has taught us. When you were in a place you felt deserted and called on God, what do you remember when he really asked you or helped you pull you out of that situation? What do you remember? Anybody? Does it want to help us? Well, I'll tell you what, what happened with me. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, at birth, a few days after I was born, I was abandoned uh, in an alley. And left in a in a duplex. We used to call them shotgun houses. It was a abandoned, a vacant duplex. And uh, you know, growing up, after I've come to know, have knowledge of that in my teenage years, you know what I mean. I, I struggle with the fact that that even happened. But but as I began to look back on it, as I got older, and especially when I got in Christ, I realized that where I went, ended up had a lot to do with where I started out. 
so, so God can leave you, not necessarily leave you, leave you, but have you in a place where you feel like you were left, but that place was actually part of your journey. Yeah. And, and, and to make it even more eccentric than that, I had to look back at the name of the street that I was left on. The name of the street that I was abandoned on was called Love's Alley, L-O-V-E-S. Mm -hmm. So that even further made me feel it, made me know that God didn't leave me in a place where I wasn't loved or because I wasn't loved. You know what I mean? It didn't matter what the abandonment of my mother was was about. Right. What really mattered is what is the fact that he never abandoned me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why I ended up in a good home, even though that home had its challenges. That, that's why I ended up uh, in the pulpit. And I'm actually writing a book. I might mention it before. The name of the book is called From the Alley to the Pulpit. Because that's a journey, not that I took on my own, but that was a journey that was already laid out by God. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if we, I felt abandoned, but I realized that, that he had never left me. Amen. 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 The, the amazing thing about God was that he delivered us out of our situation into a union with himself. And what better person as I said that way, to be joined with, because then nothing can really overcome you that he doesn't allow for you to learn it from, but it won't consume you like the furniture would not consume you, would not consume you. And he's our protector, our fortress, our refuge, mm -hmm. all of that. It's, all, it's just the very opposite of being deserted. Now you're being protected, being comforted, being shielded. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just amazing that we have to look at that. And, and when we look at what he did by giving his one and only son who paid for all of our sins as protection, not for a little while, but eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life. <laughs> you can't buy that. But he paid for that. And sometimes we don't appreciate that as, as much as we should. We get caught up in, in even in our Christian services, uh, in preaching, in healing, in teaching, in all of these things. What is that? The main thing? <laughs> no, the main thing is being caught up in, in oneness with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. not, not what he allows us to do not what he instructs us to do not even what he gifts us to do because that's just part of the pro that's just part of the package the whole package is everything in Jesus that he allows us and gives us, protects us <laughs> showers down on us hallelujah that's right in line with our um, theme for this year overflow because it's all overflow when we caught up and wrapped up, tied up and tangled up in Jesus. Because then we become abandoned into Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow. Without restraint. That's mm -hmm. that's a process. Without restraint. So we, we had to give up. Then let's make a deal. Lord, I'll do this if you do that. Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, wow. Ooh. We are called to proclaim Jesus Christ. That's what we are abandoned to, abandon him to his call, to proclaim him at any time, not just in the pulpit, but in the street, on the corner, on the phone. We never know what God going to put before us or who he's going to put before us or how he's going to put them before us. But at that very moment, we have to abandon ourselves from our personal life into the project of our personality and purpose. Of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes, and and uh I'm not I, I venture to say that all of us have been in a place where God has called us to do something that this 
what are you calling me to do that for? Mm -hmm. And like it or not, sometimes it's for a person who worked on our last note. Why do I have to talk to them? <laughs> and that means we have to abandon our personal feelings to the purpose of God. Amen. 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 Oh. That, <laughs> oh. that part. That part. Wow. Wow. That part. You know what, uh, Pastor Tim, when you use that analogy, when when you're put in a position like that, where he will only have you go and speak to somebody that you know didn't work your last nerve or they did something to you, it seems like only you have been handpicked for that job right there <laughs> to do that. Because anybody else would be like, well, I get that piece and I give them a piece of my mind. Well, I'm going to cuss them out. Well, I'm going to fuss them out. And they'll tell you, you're different. Because if it was me, I'd approach it like this. But your heart sometimes won't let you approach it like that. And you know when God tells you to do something that you're like, no, I want to say this. And he's like, no. Approach him in love. And he's like, Lord, really I got to do it that way? You know, and so you know it's him telling you to do it then because your way, you want to go and get a piece of your bag. But he's like, no, nope. <laughs> approach it like this. I want you to say this. I want you to, uh, to love him. And then he'll hit you with, I love you when you don't do what I ask you to do. Yep. When you don't dot every eye across every T. Then that's it right there. You, just, <laughs> you must do what you must do then. <laughs> Pastor Sparrow, that is so powerful right there. I remember. And it's funny that God got me living where I live now. So I was leaving my second husband. I'm sitting at Diamond Spring and Northampton Boulevard. I'm at the light. Hmm. and that was the first time God had ever ever spoke to me hmm. he said so you not going to forgive him hmm. Hmm. I threw his <laughs> Lord <laughs> forgive me but I did I was like but Joyce Myers and Creflo Dollar say it <laughs> 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 he less than an infidel. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. God say, after all the stuff I don't forgive you for, you're mm. not going to forgive your husband. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and when I tell y'all, he took me from wife and allowed me to fall into mistress status mm. for three years. Mm. Hurt me to my core. He said, oh, so you think you're running a show and you don't want to be the wife mm. and go through this furnace back mm. to Sunday, right? Because yeah. <laughs> you're running stuff. Uh -huh. You want to run it because Creflo Dollar said <laughs> and, and of course Maya said, okay, mm. <laughs> go ahead out there, a mistress for three years. I went from a size 12 to a zero. Hmm miserable for three years and then I fell back on my knees. I said, okay, God love ain't supposed to hurt like this. <laughs> he not supposed to feel like this. <laughs> he moved him, took him straight to the penitentiary for 10 years. I said, well, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you know. I my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was on point with that one. Wow. Mm -hmm. But that's the same way he dealt with me on foolishness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always saying, I can't put up with this foolishness. And all he said to me was, I put up with yours. Oh, there it is. He cut it to the quick. He cut it to the quick. You know how to get like that. And that was just the other day because I was still saying, I can't stand this foolishness. And he was like, I put it with yours. I'm like, mm. oh, that's right. Okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. When we uh, look at John 3.16, if you try to say you know what abandonment means, when you look at John 3.16, you realize we don't know what abandonment means because mm -hmm. God gave himself absolutely, completely to us through Jesus. 
for us. Amen. Without restraint. Mm -hmm. Jesus took on all of that for us. Without restraint. I was telling somebody the other day is um, I came up in a time of protest, but I had to have uh, limited protests. I couldn't be sitting in the counter of somebody spitting on me because I'd have been in jail a day. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think it was enough training for him to help me get that reaction out. You spit on me. Mm -mm. I would have been abandoned to something else. <laughs> and, and not the good side. <laughs> but God gave everything without restraint for us mm. when he gave us Jesus. Amen. His one and only son. Mm. Can, I, can I ask a question? And this is to the entire group, anybody who can answer it. Right. Um, knowing that uh, Jesus did what he did for us, especially what Pastor Tim is talking about, just giving himself completely to the calling that was basically on him to do, go through, deal with everything that he dealt with. And we know that that was complete love for us. And we hadn't even thought about giving our life to him yet. With all that being said, how are we supposed to approach life knowing that you have people in the world that you deal with every day on your job or in your house that don't carry it the way we're discussing tonight. They don't know nothing about this. Or maybe they do, and they still carry it a certain way. How are we supposed to carry it? Now, I'm, I'm, I'll speak for the group because there could be some other people that want to know the same thing. But I'm trying to figure out how are we supposed to carry it in a way like Jesus carried it and going through what he went through. How are we supposed to carry it in a world that exists like that, that's around us 24 seven, unless we go to sleep. And, but when we wake up, it's the same thing over and over again. How are we to uh, walk the way Jesus walked through that, what he went through? Well, he did tell his father to forgive them for mm -hmm. they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't, they don't realize the consequences. Mm -hmm. So we should take a posture, that's your word, Stan, a prayer. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Our, our example of that is Jesus in the garden where he yes, surrendered sir. his will mm -hmm. to the Father's will. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what we have to do. That's, that's the abandonment we're really talking about, where yes. we give up everything, our rights, uh -huh. everything and to do what God wants us to do. Amen. Not my will, but thy will. And he's not he's not asking us to go on the cross and bleed for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even though it might feel like that when you talk oh, to somebody. Yeah. You know, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but yeah. it's the same thing. It's 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 the abandonment of our will into mm -hmm. his. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it gives the word abandoned takes on a whole new meaning because it's not you being deserted, but you deserting your your wants, your desires, mm -hmm. your flesh mm -hmm. for what God wants. His will. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Stanley. You pretty much answered your own question right. when you <laughs> you walk like God would walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so with that being said, like Pastor Tim was saying, completely abandoned. So if we completely abandon our will of how we want to respond to something or some person or some action that's being mm -hmm. done to us, is there a point where, is there a, a point where you say, and I, I think Pastor Green was touching on it, where you, uh, you just, you let go and stop trying to love or trying to uh, give somebody something that they clearly are not in a position to receive right now. Because they are doing the opposite of what you are trying to do. You're trying to be loving as a Christian is supposed to be. But you can clearly realize or you can clearly tell that this ain't getting us nowhere. And the only way for me to be heard is just to let it go entirely. Is well, there a, 
Go ahead, Pastor Green. No, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Is is there a point where you and I like Miss Joe said, I think I probably asked my own question. Is there a <laughs> point where you can say, you know what, I'm gonna let go? Because I feel like it's time to let go. And for me, that would be a, a, a hard no. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'll explain the reason why. Yes, sir. It's because he never let go. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and one of the things that um, I think when we look at the cross, mm -hmm. everything up to the cross, to the cross, on the cross, and off the cross into the grave, mm -hmm. he wanted us to see not that he could endure, but that that endurance was for us. Mm -hmm. We should have been beaten that way. <laughs> we should have been scourged that way. Mm -hmm. We should have been forced to carry our cross that way. Mm -hmm. We should have been nailed to that same cross. All those things that he did for us is what we should have endured ourselves. Mm -hmm. when, when, when we said he paid it for us, we have to put in the context that he actually really did. Because <laughs> the things that God could or should or would have done to us, <laughs> he didn't do. But he did it for us. He endured <laughs> for us. So mm. we would. And he did it as an example to, to let us know, don't let go. Mm. Don't say, don't say a, a yes to your flesh. Say yes to his will. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so our answer to the flesh should always be no. And our answer to his will should always be yes. Amen. 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 But what if you're in the place where the will is, I mean, you don't, you really don't know his will. Because, it, it, I mean, you could be walking in a state, I guess I, I understand what Stanley's asking. Well, I, 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 I thought about the time that when they were trying to kill Jesus and he would slip away. Mm -hmm. right. uh, he would get away from that thing or what was trying to destroy him. It might have been for a season, but he did get away. Not that he don't love, you know, but he still got away. Well, I don't think he was talking about getting away. I think he was talking about getting even. Oh, are you talking about getting even? No, 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 no. Uh, what I mean is like, okay, we, everybody that's on the, on the line tonight understand the, the command of God, uh, the command from God to us, love your neighbor. Right. Mm -hmm. we know, that's, that's the main thing that sits in the, that sits at the top of our, uh, our walk as Christians. But what if your neighbor or somebody in your household or somebody in your family is not in a position to give that back. They're not even trying to give it back, but you're you're aiming to do what God is commanding you to do in the Bible. I, I look at what we do when it comes to Bible study. It's a it's a look through a certain lens of how we're supposed to do it as Christians. Some people look at it, uh, look at life another way. They say, you, you punch me, I'm gonna punch you back. You say this to me, I'm gonna say this to you back. But we're commanded to show love and to move in love. But the world is not always in a position to give that love back. Is there a point where you say, you know what? I can't do this anymore. This is starting to hurt me as I give love. Is there a point where you let go of that and just let God be God? You have to ask God to you help. You can you. always say to you. All you have to do is to pray for that person. You can always ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's, it's a personal thing. Right. It's mm -hmm. not a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you have to seek the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And yes, whatever it leads you to do, you have to do. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and, and I think sometimes we, we do ourselves a disservice by expecting to get uh, sweet water from a bitter faucet. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's just not going to happen. So, so with that being said, <laughs> what you just said, Pastor Green, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking that because whenever I study, I want to have it so that it's applicable to my life, where I can 
app mm -hmm. applied to life. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, you just said, how can we get bitter water? I mean, sweet water from a, a bitter faucet or a bitter fountain. So knowing that, is there a point where you stop trying to get clean water from a bitter fountain and just let God be God, just stand back? You say, release it, God. I'm releasing it and just stand back. So there must be a point, right? Well, I think if I if I hear you correctly, mm -hmm. you know, there there should be a point when we understand mm -hmm. that, that battle is not ours; it's, it's God's. It's yes, our job to love them, but it's now it shouldn't be our expectation that our love will change them, okay, or, or that our love will motivate them to love us in return. Mm -hmm. you know, we we love because we're supposed to, right? But we don't love for our love is not results oriented. The only results that we're looking for is the one day here, well done, my good and faithful servant. Okay. Uh, so we're looking to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Not not that it will change what somebody else uh, does or doesn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I I think I heard you correctly. Right, right. Can I, I, can I piggyback on top of that? Yes, you know, sir. We, please. We, it's easy us. It's easy for us to love the lovable, but we sometimes mm -hmm. we call to love the unlovable mm -hmm. one <laughs> you can't love. Uh, my example, and 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 it taught me the greatest lesson because I had a supervisor who was intent on firing me and didn't hold didn't hold it back. That was her purpose. That was her intent. Did everything crooked, and God had me to pray for this person. Wow. I said, Lord, they're trying to hurt me. You want me to pray for them? <laughs> you know? And he just said, pray for them. You got to love them. Mm. And it did. Can, I, can I offer a scripture? Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. To well, he took me to First John 3. Well, we got to love them. You got to love them. Mm -hmm. He didn't say you got to like them. You got to love them. <laughs> it's beyond that. And that's what he calls us to do. Didn't say they're going to love you back. Mm -hmm. Didn't say that. He just told us we have to love them. Mm -hmm. So, Go ahead, Pastor. What I was going to say in Luke 6, 32 to 36, Luke, the sixth chapter, 32 to 36, it says, if you love those who love you, what credit <laughs> is that to you? There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. He said, he said, he said, even sinners love those who love them. Mm. Wow. If you do, if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit mm. is that to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> even sinners do that. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Mm. Even sinners lend to sinners mm -hmm. expecting to mm -hmm. be repaid in full repaid. <laughs> but love your enemies do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a hard Amen. Thing. Yeah. then your the reward then your reward will be great and, and you will be the children of the most high because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked be merciful just as your father is merciful. <clears throat> Amen. 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 And I, you know, I, I asked that question because Pastor Tim, you know, with the lesson that you're teaching and you mentioned uh, a reckless ab abandonment, you know, that's giving, giving up your right 1000% to anything else other than the pursuit to what the command is from God. And I was just wondering, do, do we put our feelings and everything else on the back burner to love people. <laughs> oh, do we carry it like it's reckless, uh, <laughs> like it's <laughs> reckless to, to show love? Or did Jesus do that and we ain't got to go that far? Okay, um, um, that's a great segue for what's about to come. <laughs> okay, because uh, that question has been asked by the disciples <laughs> Turn to uh, Mark 10, 28 and 29, and somebody read that. Wow. Uh, you can do King James and NIV. You said Mark 10 and what else? 
Twenty eight, twenty nine. Twenty eight, twenty nine. The new King James. We can either New King James or King James, and then NIV. Okay, I got the New King James. It says, "Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you.' Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left." house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life and I mean got the NIV it reads and Peter spoke up we have left everything to follow you truly I tell you Jesus replied no one has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age homes brothers sisters mothers children and fields along with persecution and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first now we we, we ask questions in in, in um uh, compartments mm -hmm. but jesus answer <laughs> covered every avenue that we could think mm -hmm. whether it's our children our family our possessions mm -hmm. all of that and Peter said, we left all to follow you. <laughs> he <laughs> said, we abandoned everything to follow you. He was using it in the desertion stage, the negative mm -hmm. part. We left everything <laughs> that we had to follow you. Mm -hmm. and Jesus basically said, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we want to hear when, when we didn't forsake it, everything? Gave up mm -hmm. everything with no guarantee? Did they have a guarantee? Until he told him, when you do this in the future, it'll be repaid. Wow. Didn't say repay right now. Amen. Amen. Um. <laughs> not easy to hear, not easy to do, but it's easy to give in to Jesus when we realize who he is to us. Mm hmm. Amen. I needed that when I came across it. I needed that. I needed that. Because sometimes you feel like you're giving up everything. And what what is it, what is it worth? It's worth eternal life. Amen. 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 Pastor Tim, I wonder if Jesus knew that this would be hard for us in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. It, it was hard for me in, in 81 when I first came into the fellowship of Christ. It don't get easier, just get better. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as we have gone through this lesson, what the word does abandonment mean to you now? I mean, I need to live in abandonment. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we, uh, I think it was a, um, I, I know it's a scripture. I just don't know what it, uh, where it is, but it speaks about us being, uh, slaves to Christ, but not as an uh, uh, actual slave is. Yeah. But a slave to Christ, meaning that we fully submit to him, submitting dedicated. everything. De completely dedicated. And it don't matter what anybody outside of that says. You know, sometimes people's mm -hmm. opinion can cause us to act a certain way. But when mm -hmm. you're like, fully committed and dedicated to something, and like you said, reckless, I think about Kobe Bryant, the way they said that he would just be in the gym, like 
all the other players would be gone when it came to practice, but he's still in the gym working on his, his game, just perfecting it. It didn't matter what everything else was going on. It even didn't matter what was going on back at the house. But and when you re- when he reached a certain level where he was being awarded in front of everybody who plays the game, he'll speak about how he thanks his wife for being able to hold down the household while he was out there perfecting the craft and winning games. Mm-hmm. So sacrificing everything that's going on at the house for the sport. Or even when you think about a soldier, a soldier has to have everything right at the house. So when he leaves, that's not on his mind. He can focus on what's in front of him. Right. Just being dedicated to being a soldier. Well, uh, that, that's what we're talking about. It's Romans 6, 20. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, Mm -hmm. things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Mm -hmm. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. Mm. Amen. I think that's the script you were looking at. Mm-hmm. Where was that? Romans 6, 20 through 20. You can read through 23. Yeah, I thought you were already doing this. You know, there it's was amazing. something that the Go old ahead, church. Go ahead. Oh, okay. That there was something the old church used to do years ago, and they used to call it. The, a lock up, a lock in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shut in. Yeah, you, that's what we used to call it. Uh, shut in. We had yeah. it at Burning Bush. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, my question is because what I realize is that I'm constantly involved in a shut in. And I'll just say, because nobody knows my wife could attest to it, um, especially when God has given me a word, the hours that I sleep, shift mm-hmm. a lot of times I'm up all night long mm-hmm. and I've learned I've, I've, and I've learned to be content with that mm-hmm. because of what the outcome is mm-hmm. um at first I would be frustrated by it because I felt like I needed to get sleep mm-hmm. not knowing that God could give me everything I need mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but if, if just imagine if we don't worry about the corporate shut in, mm-hmm. create our own shut in. Mm-hmm. Pick a time and a place where we're intent to spend time with God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Why it's all night for me? God knows the answer to that. Amen. Maybe all day for you. I don't know what the, <laughs> what the hours are. Um, but oftentimes I see the sunrise. Mm. And and I see the sunrise while I'm reading God's word. I'm studying God's word. I'm looking at different aspects of God's word for a message that probably won't last longer than 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at this, but at the same time, God will have you at the gospel plow for hours. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. For those that may have maybe have not brought had an opportunity to do that, um, bring a word, but if we amplify that in our lives, yes, it will prepare us for our for our journey. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, you can't stay up every night, and maybe at night is not what God wants you to do. Mm-hmm. We have to follow His will. When we d- decide, Lord, tonight <laughs> I'm going to spend this night with you. Mm-hmm. As intimate as it is, mm-hmm. in your word, in prayer, in, in 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 whatever you would have me to do, I'm just gonna listen to you and nothing else. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, I, it's amazing wow. you say that, Pastor Green. I, I, I'm a person who would like to get caught up in a in a pattern, but God won't let me. So sometimes it's all night. Sometimes it's three hours. I never know, so I had to learn to just give in and say, 
okay, God, what are we doing? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? Cause mm -hmm. it, and, and and to be satisfied with that, that it's not uh, the same way every time. I, mm -hmm. I just never know. And I guess that's part of my personality. I have to trust him. I have to trust him because it's not going to be my way. It's going to be his way. Amen. Amen. You know, the thing about when God keeps you up or you determined that you're going to be up, you don't be tired. Yeah. Yeah. You could seem like you refreshed and renewed. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's when you spend all night with the word, my God, <laughs> you get some, you get some power. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I used to fight that thing, but now if God come up in there, I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> you say, I'm up. <laughs> I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. Uh, you go well rested the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do. You don't miss. You don't. You don't feel tired. Yeah. I do be upset. I'm like, really, God? It's two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's five o'clock and I'm still awake. Uh -huh. <sighs> the sun is coming up. There you go. When that sun <laughs> break that corner, it's all right. And you haven't said a word. So what do I do? Oh, turn the TV on. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a message on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm share this yeah. last thought with you. Uh, in our abandonment, we give ourselves over to God, just as God gave Himself to us, without calculation, without restraint, mm -hmm. without cutting the cost. Mm. Oh man, the consequence of abandonment never comes into play when we abandon ourselves into the personal property of, of Jesus. We abandon, we abandon ourselves into him. We don't have to count the cost. Hallelujah. Amen. He paid it all. Amen. <laughs> he paid it all. Mm -hmm. You know, you all think time. about uh, with, with Black history just ending, uh, we look at what people went through as they were sprayed with the water hose, spat on, dogs, you know, sat on them and things like that. And you look at that and you, some people say, I might not be able to survive in that era. But you look at people like Martin Luther King and uh, Rosa Parks and all of the people who basically set the foundation for the things that we have as rights now, but they had to basically put their desire of, making a ruckus about being spat on, making a ruckus about the dogs being said, yes, that was wrong, but they didn't make a big deal about it because they knew the purpose was more important. Mm. The the calling of what they were doing was more important than how they flesh felt about it, you know? Because mm. that could have went in a completely different direction if they yes, just indeed. dwelt on how their flesh was feeling about it. Well, you know, there was a leader Mm -hmm. His last name was King. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and and he said in so many words, paraphrasing, "I've seen my death, but I'm not afraid of it." Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said longevity is something that we all would want. Amen. But he says something that gives me chills right now. Glory <laughs> to God. He said, but my eyes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Mm. The glory. Hallelujah. My eyes. And see, and see, that's what we got to get to that point where my eyes have seen it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Can't nobody, <laughs> and I go back to what, what Karen was saying. Uh, uh, she was telling us, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I saw it. They put in one liter of blood. They put in two liters of blood. They put in three liters. I saw it. My mm. eyes mm. have seen the glory of the coming mm. of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not just any glory. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. He said, my eyes have seen the glory. Mm. Mm. And, and that's where we have to get to that point where we, we say to ourselves, I'm not afraid mm. <laughs> of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He sure did say, yes. Uh, he yes. said, I would love to live a life, longevity, mm. 
Mm. Oh. Has its purpose. Well, yeah, I love I, to get down have Jesus. <laughs> I, I'd rather have Jesus. You know, you know, uh, as the song said, than silver and gold. But I'd rather have Jesus. Mm. Amen. So, so when when we get to the point where our eyes, mm. not our physical eyes, but our eyes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not them eyes rolling around in your head, <laughs> but our eyes. Hey, Amen. Oh, you know, glory. You, you be like, you be like, 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 uh, uh, ludicrous and get out the way, move, <laughs> get out the way, get out the way. I'm telling you, move, and you ain't got to look, look, it, it, it ain't gonna shake you like it used to shake. Mm hmm. It ain't gonna make you do stuff like it used to make you do. Cause my eyes. Mm. So that's why they could go through the German shepherds biting on them because my eyes. Yes, absolutely. Mm. The beating them down with Have mercy sticks. Jesus. My eyes. Mm -hmm. Locked up in jail. My eyes. Mm -hmm. Whew. That's being abandoned to the cause. Yes. That God yeah. gave them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's when he said, I've seen the mountain top. Yeah, I've seen it. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. He saw it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and and I tell you, uh, having been a child of the of the movement, literally a child, uh, I was privy to being in places before the demonstration. I only marched a couple of times as a little boy, but thank God it wasn't they weren't beating us up but when I tell you when you come get down on that street by the time you have sung we have we shall overcome oh my mm -hmm. god you would you would feel like you could run through a brick wall mm -hmm. <laughs> you would feel like because God is on my side mm -hmm. if God God being for me who who amen so so yeah, that, that, that's that, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. My eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Got turned over. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you turned upside down. There you go. <laughs> you, you got turned over. My eyes. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, I thank y'all for sharing tonight. That is all I have. And I thank God for the word that he gave me. Amen. 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 Good to hear you, Pastor Tim. Uh, I thank God for you for you teaching tonight, Pastor Tim. You were you were uh I said an eager participant. It, it took you only a few seconds to say yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I thank God for everyone. So, so look out, y'all. I want to to share this opportunity with with many others as well, you know, because we're in a dispensation and a time where God, His Spirit, being within all of us, can manifest itself through us. Amen. Amen. So I, I, I understand that, that those that may not have preached before or taught before can experience some nervousness, but if you trust God. Mm -hmm. And just say, Lord, whatever you give me is all I got. That's it. Amen. Amen. Whatever you give me is all I got. Mm -hmm. you know? Amen. And, and watch him do the rest. So that's so it's coming, y'all. <laughs> I, I see some teachers coming around coming around the corner. I see them, some teachers, but at least once a month, I I would very much like to to extend the opportunity for others. And, and even maybe more. I mean, it's, this is a season where we grow together. Yeah, you know, and we use the opportunities uh, to uh, to get in God's word, and and uh, when I call you, just grab a hold of it. Say, "Hey, I'll do all that God give me." That's all you can do. Amen. <laughs> you do. Amen. Amen. I don't try to sound like Stanley. He don't try to try to sound like me. And CC don't try to sound like Pastor Tim. He don't try to sound like her. You know, because we're all God's children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There should be only one driving force in what we do and what we say, and that's God and the Holy, His Holy yeah. Spirit speaking. Amen. Amen, Pastor.
Amen. So uh, I, I encourage you all that when you get the call, <laughs> don't say yes, Lord, to me. Say yes, Lord, to him. <laughs> Amen. 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 Give in to him. <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you so much. Great lesson, Pastor Tim. Praise the Lord. That being all, that's it? That's Everybody, it. Are all hearts and minds clear? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, abandon the flesh. Abandon the flesh. <laughs> Amen. Oh, amen. It just and makes me think about Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh-huh. Present your body a living sacrifice. Yeah. Mm. And holy mm. acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed mm. by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. I'm gonna finish in a minute. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That Amen. You can prove what is that good and acceptable. Yeah. And perfect will of God. I mean, that's what we're talking about, ain't it, Pastor Tim? Amen. Yes, Amen. indeed. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we got to believe that the enemy can't break in. That's right. He can't there break through. He can't break us up. He can't break us down. Yes, mm -hmm. right. He don't hold the brakes. <laughs> God got his hand on all the brakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Break up, break through, break down. Break in half, all of those breaks. Amen. 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 And we believe in God. We believe that He is a God mm -hmm. of the breakthrough. Amen. Glory. A mess Amen. is coming to a pulpit near you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we got to slide that in there, right? <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait we got to slide that in there. <laughs> Look, uh, gracefully broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, God's uh -huh. dealing with me about a series called Blueprint for a Breakthrough. Mm. Wow. It's a series, Blueprint for a Breakthrough. <laughs> Excellent. Hallelujah. Excellent. So we'll see what the Lord will say. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds clear? Anybody? Well, Pastor Tim, you've done something that I have not been able to do. You are <laughs> ending at this on the hour. It's 829, mm. probably leaning on 830. Praise <laughs> God. Teach me, Pastor Tim. <laughs> Show me the way. <laughs> All I can say is when, when God stops talking, so do I. That's it. <laughs> Pastor Tim, it's done. Amen. Oh, that's, that's one thing I like about Pastor Tim. God is done, he's done. <laughs> Yeah. Man. I, I want him to finish with me on time. Please hey, finish with me on time. I'm, anyway, that's my wish. <laughs> Didn't that take, take us home? <laughs> you might be yeah. going home. No, there she is. <laughs> she had to get something to drink out the fridge. <laughs> Well, let the words in my mouth. Let the words in my, my, my mouth. mouth. The words in my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the, and meditation, the meditation of my heart. heart. And the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in that sight. Be acceptable in that sight. Oh Lord, my strength. Oh Lord, my strength. Oh Lord, my strength. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. Amen. And if I had the clothes, then my Redeemer lives. If my Redeemer lives. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. Good night, everybody. Good job, Good Pastor Tim. Good night. 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 Good night.